it explores the shape of things to come in the new Games Master. and welcome to Games Master, the show that doesn't mind its sandcastle being knocked over by two attractive ladies playing football. Girls. Tonight sees the beginning of our annual footy tournament, a competition more highly regarded than the Leyland Daft Trophy. And as a tribute to football in the 70s, our event today is dominated by violence. It's a delightful wee thing we like to call shoot down the shops and get us a paper. <laughs> Before this event, my contestant was required to keep his wits about him as he entered an environment of unparalleled chaos in the arcade shoot 'em up gun blade. Armed with a powerful vibrating weapon, the contestant has one credit with which to complete all eight areas of the game. One credit means five lives. But considering the mayhem he's likely to encounter, I suspect he'll need every one of them if he's going to take the joystick. Okay, this game obviously needs a very strong wrist, so please welcome today's master games player, the acronym Mr. Paul Ram. <laughs> welcome to the show, Paul. Now, Paul, uh, like many, Channel 4 television presenters, you spent some time in the Territorial Army. Yeah, that's right. What kind of stuff did you learn in that? Um, camouflage, ambush, one-on-one um, -on -one combat, disarming and killing dogs, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> and killing dogs? Yeah. Is that something you've had to use in later life? No. No. That's, a, that's always a first thing. Now, Paul, we did say you need strong wrists for this. Have you been doing anything in particular to strengthen yours? Uh, yeah, I've been chalking my chicken. Right. Because you are from a farm, aren't Yeah, that's right, yeah, you I live, live on a farm. Yeah. On farm. Your nickname is Bruce. Yeah. Why is that? Well, um, a couple of friends from Wolverhampton named me Bruce because of my haircut. It's like on the Doritos advert. Uh-huh. Uh, Bruce Lee's got the same kind of haircut. Right. But probably the same reason why I get called John Bon Jovi by my friends for no, that I, same... I was going to call you Penfold. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Penfold, yeah. right. Very good, very funny. With, we will have a contestant on who is funny one of these days, but it's a very good attempt. Hopefully your attempt at the challenge will be better, Paul. If you'd like to go and get that big weapon in your hands, please. And I'll go up to the commentary box. And talking through this one is Dave Perry. Dave, tell us something we don't know about you already. About me already? What, um... Oh, let's have a think. What, apart from the fact that I've been country's top 50 bachelors, um, that I'm rich, probably the best games player in the country, that kind of thing. That kind of thing? I think you know it all. That will suffice. Okay, Dave, let's move on then to any tips you've got for Paul on the game. Okay, well, the thing is that, uh... This game has been made by the same people that made the Virtual Cop series. But, so, when the, when the baddies are targeted, the target does turn red when they're about to shoot you. But the thing with this game is, it turns red a whole lot quicker, so you haven't got half the time. But you've got unlimited ammo. You haven't got to reload on this game, so just pump them full of lead. Okay, thank you, Dave. Uh, Paul has got the duration of the show to play through all eight areas of the game. He's only allowed a one credit, which uh, roughly translates into five lives for the layman. Best of luck, Paul. Your challenge begins now. Okay, so of course Paulie is in a helicopter, that's why we've quite literally got a helicopter on the screen. We'll be flying around quite a lot. He's beginning in the Times Square in New York. Now we've got baddies all over the place. The top left-hand corner of the screen you can see a heart and then the Times 5. That means he's got five lives left when that's going to do The challenge is over. We can see that target you were talking about, David. It is zipping around very quickly. It's very, very fast indeed. And the thing with this game as well, over the Virtual Cop series, is that you're in a helicopter, so you're moving all the time. There's not only are the targets moving, you're moving. And there are buku bogeys out there. OK, so uh, once again, uh, just to reiterate, Paul's wrist will take a lot of severe punishment throughout the course of this challenge. It's going to be very, very tough. It's more about stamina 
as much as it is of a skill at the moment. It's fine. He hasn't lost one life yet. He's quite safely mopping up the speed surf. This is very, very good. A lot of um, interesting facial wear that the baddies are using. Some nice lines and masks here. As you can see, they're opening up here. Three big, nasty looking boys in here, Dave. Yes, that's right. Those are the guys you see in the intro sequence on the game. And that's the only finished this first area. He hasn't lost a life. That's quite a good performance. Okay, so Paul's just entering Midtown Manhattan. We're going to leave him there as his wrists take the greatest strain since the last episode of Baywatch. And we'll go to today's news. <laughs> Oi, that bloke's Nick Rupert the Bear's trousers! These are exclusive pictures of the first golf simulation game for the Nintendo 64. St Andrew's Golf uses the little stick on the joypad to act as a club, providing a more authentic sense of impact when you whack your balls. The further you pull back, the stronger your swing gets. The game is slated for release early next year. Bradford's IMAX Cinema has just announced an extension of their super widescreen attraction special effects. The movie takes the audience on a journey behind the scenes of some of the biggest special effects films ever. Not just cack ones like Jumanji, but classics like King Kong and blockbusters like Independence Day. Also featured is a tantalizing glimpse of the upcoming special edition Star Wars movies out next spring. If you haven't already been, grab your old person's rail card and head up to Bradford. Special effects runs until March, and it's probably the only reason to go to Bradford. I'm pissed! Yes, pissed is the oh-so-hilarious name of a satirical CD-ROM that is everything the best-selling title missed wasn't. Instead of a beautiful island, the action takes place in a kind of hideous run-down holiday camp, closely resembling Bradford. The start of the game, John Goodman plays piss on savoury monarch. All the world's a game, and you're a pest. No, player. This is Malcolm Barty. The, piss the gameplay emulates Mr. Puzzle, puzzle Stroke mystery type genre, but above all, piss tries to be funny, which uh, unfortunately it isn't. Original pillars. Welcome back. Paul Ram has been given the duration of the show to play right through Gumblade on only one credit. He's coming to the end of the second stage here. If you look at the top left side corner of the screen, you can still see he's got those five lives left. He's been playing very well, Dave. Yeah, he's doing well so far. Like you say, he hasn't lost a single life and he's getting to the end of the stage. He's uh, speeding up his chopper and now we've got a kind of big van type boss situation here, Dave. Yeah, you're going to miss our launcher on top. Going to take that one out. Big gun, big gun. Take him out early. Okay, now is it the man who's got to take out all the actual gun? I can see the no, target. Take, take the man out, take the man out. Okay, the bottom of the screen, you can see the energy bar of the big gun. It's uh, when it all goes red instead, as I think it's just about to do. He's evading all these guys. Go, gone. There he goes. Wonderfully well, that's it. That's the big yeah. guy taken out at the end of area two. A fantastic display so far by Paul. He still has not lost one life and so now Paul is going to fly on to the United Nations headquarters. We're going to leave him doing that because we're going to move from men zipping around firing big guns to blokes playing football. That's a little link for all the surrealists out there. As we go over to Games Master for the start of this year's Celebrity Football Challenge. Ah yes, it's that time of the year again when football comes home to Games Master. And this year I've selected the Saturn game Worldwide Soccer test our players' virtual skills. Each match will consist of one three-minute half, and I'll be looking out for players to make use of the game's impressive array of moves, including shimmies, fakes, and Beckham-style chips. Let's hit the park! Okay, for the first round of our footy tournament, we went looking for two of the footballing stars of tomorrow. That's why they're not Scottish. Please welcome English Under-21 Internationals, Richard Rufus and Michael Dubery. <laughs> welcome to the show, Michael. Thanks for coming on, Richard. Now, Michael, I want to talk about the game you're playing tonight. Now, uh, Michael, you're playing as Italy yeah. tonight. What kind of game are we going to see from you? Um, good passing game. Nice attacking. Nice flair. I mean, a lot of skill. Yep. Not much, not much to ask for, really, is it? No, no. <laughs> what about you, uh, Richard? Are we going to see the sim? Well, yeah, basically just a passing game and loads of movement off my front two strikers, hopefully. OK, that's great. Well, if you want to see who wins the battle of England's young guns, plus 
find out how Territorial Army dog killer Paul is getting on in Gumbly. Join us after this break. Car insurance? You can earn your no-claim bonus faster. How? Admirals. Bonus accelerator. Call 0800 600 800. I thought I was running away. But I was just running. Through the night. Into the light. All I could see was you. No beginning. No end. The very best of the fine young cannibals. Their 14 finest tracks on one classic album. Including the latest hit, The Flame. Fine young cannibals, the finest. Big Mac, give me a Big Mac, please. I found the right mobile for me. Hi. I found the right page. Everything you wanted to know about all types of communications behind one door. I found it safer to surf the net. Who can answer all your questions this Christmas? Tandy can. Real Power Workshop! A unique power center that drives four easy-to-use tools. Real Power Workshop helps you shape and cut balsa wood without cutting your fingers. Follow our plans to drill, sand, turn and cut. Or use your imagination, whatever you want to make. Real Power Workshop! Make sure you stay cool under pressure. No the 1997 Laguna comes with air conditioning and an electric sunroof as standard. Laguna by Renault. It's all worked out beautifully. Welcome back to Games Master, where this show is more packed than the packed World Cup of 1980 pack. We have got England Young Guns, Michael Dubery and Richard Rufus about to do battle in the first semi-final of our annual footy tournament. Paul, who has been trained in the Territorial Army to kill dogs, is playing Gunblade as we speak. Now, this is a very personal situation for me now. Uh, you may wonder what it's like to feel standing next to a television legend. Jim Rosenthal, how does it feel? I just wondering where he was, to be quite honest. He's, uh, he's the guy in the glasses, Jim. Okay. This is me. Okay. Thank you. I'm honoured. I'm honoured to be with you. Right, Jim. Uh, what kind of game are you hoping to see tonight from our two players? I've been with uh, Richard and Michael out the back, and uh, it's going to be fiercely competitive. I've been doing a lot of research on this game. Mm -hmm. Fiercely competitive. They really have worked very hard. And don't ask me for a prediction. Okay, so best of luck, Michael. Best of luck, Richard. Let's go to kick off. So then, uh, just to remind you, it's uh, Richard Rufus. And Holland, Richard wearing the yellow of Holland, and Michael Dubry in the blue of Italy. And it looks as though uh, the Italians have the kickoff. Okay, he's weaving his way through the number nine galley, who I personally haven't heard of before. He's got oh, he's the in shot here. Jim. Oh! oh, a wonderful save, though. A wonderful save. He took route one there and very nearly opened the scoring. Okay, now it's Richard on the attack in the orange of Holland. Oh, it's a terrible tackle, Jim. 
That looked very, very late, but the referee seems to have allowed play to go on. Not like the referees this season, they're blown up everything. Here comes another shot from Italy. Fine defending, though, Jim. I think so. I think uh, we've always come in, has it? Oh, has it? Oh, oh, it? Oh, they sneaked it out the corner there. That was a terrible call on your behalf, I'd have to say. The fine defending shout. The ball wasn't away. I've put the kiss of death on them, haven't I? It looks it's like one it. one nil to Michael Dubu. And if we look at the replay, Jim, it was all in the shot. He seemed to turn full circle there, didn't he? Amazing piece of skill. I think you'd have to blame the keeper a bit as well there. The Italians are looking so skillful at the moment, and Holland right up against it. Richard Rufus having used all his defensive qualities. They still haven't really penetrated the Italian half yet, and he's running the wrong way now for some reason. That's a long shot. He tried the chip. He tried the chip. Oh, that was fantastic. Huh? Tried the chip from close on the halfway line. A touch of the Beckhams and wasn't far wide. Okay, now we're going to say Dutch attack. As a game player, I would be playing more up the flanks if I was Richard Rufus, but he's, uh, and he's still going down the middle. Now it's a long range effort! Right back. Oh, he's a rebound! He tried the shot! It's, it's a great oh, save, Jim! Fantastic goal mouth action, that. A great counter-attack then from uh, Richard Rufus, and very unlucky not to equalise. That's true. He really wants to try and aim more for the corner of the goal. Maybe shoot more of an angle across the face of it, but here he comes here again, come Jim. Again. Yeah, the, the Italians, though, they are defending pretty well. Perhaps they learned their lesson after that uh, last attack. But there's a great it chance here. In. A great chance. One for one. Oh, oh, no, not again. I said this go out to Holland here. They really have played well in the last few minutes. Richard Rupert, and I think they deserve an equaliser. OK, Richard Rupert again. He's 1-0 down to Michael Dibri, but he's on the attack. He tries to shot at the end of the Yes! Oh, yes that was an amazing goal, Jim! We called it right. We called it dead right. We thought the Dutch might come back and equalise, and Richard Rupert, that was an outrageous chip over the goalkeeper. Hey. Wonderful skill. Here comes the replay. Talk us through it, Jim. Exquisite skill, really. He'd been practising that beforehand, that particular manoeuvre, and the goalkeeper embarrassed. <laughs> So it's one all and the time is ticking away. We're hoping to get a win here in normal time. If not, we'll go to penalties. Oh, a penalty shootout looming, I would think, here. Yeah, but uh, what a well-balanced game. That early goal for the Italians. They're coming for a winner here. Another great chance. It's a number nine, oh, but safely the in the keeper's hands there. Time is, I think they're maybe just playing out time here. Well, they might be playing for penalties. You never know. You never know. It's been done before. They might... Oh, it's oh, a no. bad throw out, was it? No, oh, that, I thought it was No, that's Barrett. it. The referee blows up there. We've reached the end of normal time. And we're going to go to penalties. Michael in the famous blue shirts of Italy steps up now, Jim. What, how do you think he's going to play it? Will he blast it or will he place it? Michael Dubry, that is his decision. It's, it's, it's best to keep us saved it. Now it's Richard and... Uh, Oh, he rolled oh, it straight down the middle. There's Tom McCoy. One nil to Richard Rippers. Michael's second penalty coming up. Must score here, really, to stay in it. Oh! Brilliant penalty. Perfect. Right in the top right-hand corner there. One all. Richard, he tried to go oh. down the middle again, and that was feeble, so they both now missed one. It was limp, Jim. Beautiful oh. penalty. Beautiful penalty. Top corner. Pick that one out. 2-1 to Michael Dubé, Richards, third penalty. Same place, 2-2. Two, two. Nothing in it at this stage. Oh, they like, they like that far corner, don't they? They like that far <laughs> corner. He must score this one, this is crucial. Oh, oh calm. Calm one there, slot away, 3-0. One more penalty each before we go into sudden death. It's getting very, very tense and deep here. Is it going to go in that same place again? No. He's... Oh, the other way, Vice saved it. And now we come down to Richard Rufus. Does he have the ball to slot this penalty home to make it to the final? He has. Oh, calmly done. Super cool there with the final score of four penalties to three. Richard Rufus goes through to the final. Okay, congratulations, Richard. Commiserations, uh, Michael. I'll, I'll start with you. Good goal that you scored. Do you want to talk us through it? Well, um, we've been working on like good passing movements and that. We worked our way into the box. And the striker's been on form in training and in pre-matches. He's got a nice turn and a great strike in top corner. Richard, when we came in the penalties, there was a lot of them going in the top right-hand corner. Um, as, as we were looking at it, it came down to that final penalty. You know, you only had to score it to go through to the final. What were you thinking as you were running up? Well, I was thinking all my penalties like went top corner or straight down the middle, and I thought never went bottom left corner. So I thought I might as well give it a try. And lucky enough, I sent um, his goalkeeper the wrong way, and there you go. It was an in, in, almost an intellectual game of cat and mouse chess to kind of put about four cliches together in the same sentence. 
Well, thanks so much for coming on, guys. Uh, Richard, we're going to see you in two weeks' time in our grand final. But uh, for now, uh, we have to say goodbye to both of you because uh, technically we do have the rest of the show to go along. So uh, please give a round of applause for our two special guests tonight, Michael Tuberi, Richard Rufford. <laughs> Okay, now, a message for young people at home. I am a highly trained professional and you shouldn't attempt to try presenting in your own home. As an illustration of what can happen if you do, let's go over to Dave and find out how we're doing on Gunblade. Dave, how's it going? Well, as you can imagine, a lot's happened since you were last with me. Paul has now lost his first life um, and it's gonna, we're going to show it now in the highlights in level one, area four. We got to the ship here, as you can see, plenty of guys here to shoot. As Paul's blasting around, he loses concentration just slightly. Look at the way the bullets leave their scars on the metal of the ship. I really love the way that happens in this game. Now here's where it happens. This guy goes off the ship, Paul tries to shoot him as he drops into the water. Maybe that's where he loses his concentration because he fails to see this guy who's been targeted. There's a guy here, missiles coming out. Paul tries to shoot it too late, loses his first life. Now he's one life down, he's only got four lives left on the challenge. And this is where he faces the boss at the end of the level. That's at the end of Area 4, Level 1. This is the end of Level Boss before he goes on to the hard level. Now this boss fires multiple missiles. Very, very tough to hit. It's confusing to know which one to go for. He loses another life there. He doesn't quite take that missile out. It hits him square on. He's down to three lives to complete the rest of his challenge. With these missiles, all you can do is hit the one that's closest to you. The others seem to go with it. But he's got to take this boss out. He's only got three lives left to finish his challenge with. There goes the boss. The boss goes down. Big explosion. And we move on to the hard level. Anything can happen now. He's only got three lives left to finish the challenge. Thank you very much, Dave. That was wonderful. Okay, so uh, if we play on into where Paul is, thank you. Dave, did it, would he have been better with a couple more lives up the spout at this point? Well, really, yeah. I mean, because he's now into the hardest part of the game. He's on area two of level two, which is the toughest level. He's got all these trees obscuring his vision as well. And as he comes to them, all he can see is his crosshairs to know the baddies are there, and they're taking aim. So it's much speed of reaction needed now. Uh, he's on a little fly, but I think big old gun here, Dave. This is a missile launcher yet. He wants to take that one out. And remarkably attempt at that. Fantastic. And that is the end of that area two. Okay, uh, Paul's moving on to the next level. There's only two left to complete the game. And while he does that, we're going to go to today's reviews and hope that Mr. Paul Rams here when we get back. <laughs> A couple of PlayStation games this week kicking off with Victory Boxing 97. Two grown men slap each other wearing just a pant. This time they've given us a gym where you can actually train a boxer between bouts. And the better your gym, the better your boxer will actually improve. Also, there's a promoter and he will get you fights above just the one rank above your own. Basically, you can fight the number one rank and therefore make more money and make your gym better. If you stand there and just rapidly punch, you're just going to go down in one hit. You've got to conserve your energy, you've got to block, you've got to wait, you've got to dodge, and you can even taunt. It's got everything you need, and it looks a lot better than before. There's a lot more strategy with your promoter and everything, and it's the best boxing game I've played. Pandemonium is great if you like jesters. In a recent survey though, 87% of the world didn't. The thing with Donkey Kong and even Crash Bandicoot and all the good platform games, the levels are really cleverly designed. And Pandemonium just comes across to me as it's just been put together by someone who knows how to do fancy 3D graphics. And in my opinion, it's just pretty boring. I totally disagree. This is a very good platform game, that's what's been forgotten. There are 18 extraordinarily huge levels with as many bosses as you can gather. There's also two separate characters to play, both of which who jump in different ways and perform different actions. It is absolutely superb, I'm not, I really don't know what he's on. More details on these games and listings of the pants colours I've worn this week can be found on the Games Master webpage. We'll give you the address at the end of the show. Okay, former Territorial Army dog killer Paul Ram has been playing through Gumbly since the start of the show. And if we look at the screen now, we can see he's on the second last level. But Dave, during that little BT piece there, he's lost another life. This is going to be tricky now, isn't it? Yeah, he got picked off. He doesn't seem to like the missiles, Paul. He got picked off by another missile. That means he's only got two lives now to finish this game with. 
Okay, big black van. Now, I would be surprised if there wasn't maybe something evil about that van. Indeed, there is. Huge big robot. Once again, in the bottom of the screen, you can see the robot's energy bar. How tough is this one, Dave? Well, this one's very tough, because he's going to try and soften you up for the later level. And, and the oh, missile... Oh, no, that's it. The missile's got... The missile's got through his... Uh, his, his whatever you call it, and uh, that's it. But he's gone through. He's finally gone through Area 3, but he has lost the other life there. Now, how crucial a mistake was that at the end? Well, that's a huge mistake, because that means now he's got to finish the whole of the final level which is the toughest level and it's dark as well to make it extra hard you can only take one hit and he's going to be out okay then we saw a big robot walking across it there's lots of missiles there's lots of guys and we requires utmost concentration and he's going to be very very tired at this stage of the game dave that's right he's got he's going to be very very tired he's got to look out for the red targets because if he gets targeted if one of those goes red and he doesn't finish the guy off he's going to fire a missile and we know paul does not like missiles okay once again he can't afford to make one mistake there's guys leaping out from various dark alleys a lot like Lambert grove where i live there it is. oh no that's it no no that was so quick the man jumped out from underneath Paul, we can see it now coming up in the replay. He's down the bottom, you see he gets targets in, Paul doesn't see it, sees the missile too late. And that's it, unfortunately, it's all over for Mr. Paul Ram. Yeah. Unlucky, Paul, uh, that was the beginning of the last level, it all went horribly wrong. Tell us what happened. Well, my arm was totally numb from all the vibrations I've been playing for ages. I uh hope -huh, we, we can all sympathise with that. That's a physical ailment. Okay. And um, one of those guys, I should have shot him first, and he just come back and didn't give me a second chance. How, when you were in the territory alive then, how many dogs did you actually kill? I didn't actually kill any of them. None? No. It was just theory? That's right. Would you like to kill a dog? Not really, no. Can we return the dog then? Please, I'm sorry. It's all off. <laughs> right, okay, thanks very much. Uh, it's a uh, challenge ending unsuccessfully, but please, Mr. Paul Ram, anyway. <laughs> Okay, that's it. We're all out of time and next week we'll see uh, the second semi-final of our footy tournament. But I leave you with this question. If you cross Danny Bear with a monkey, would you get a very stupid monkey? Good night.